Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss the mechanism of elimination reactions. There are three types of elimination reactions we will study today. The first that we are going to study is E2. Number two, we will study E1. And number three is a different type of mechanism called as E1CB. I will discuss the meaning of all these three one after the other. We will also compare the three mechanisms. We will also study under which circumstances which mechanism prevails. And then we will also do a comparison between E2 and SN2 which is a very commonly asked question in the competitive examinations. So let us first begin with the E2 mechanism. The E2 mechanism stands for elimination second order. It is just like SN2 mechanism, it is a one step process and the rate of the reaction depends upon concentration of two species and that is why it is SN. That is why it is E2. Let us see a most commonly taken example of E2 mechanism is the hydro halogenation of an alkyl halide in presence of alcoholic KOH. Now why we have to take alcoholic KOH, I am going to discuss separately. For the time being just understand that KOH must be alcoholic and we must apply heat. It has to be at a higher temperature. A higher temperature will favor this reaction. Let us see the mechanism now. Let me start with a simple alkyl halide, say ethyl chloride. CH3, CH2, Cl. The alcoholic pH produces a base OH minus. As it is a base, its most natural tendency is to extract a proton. So it extracts a proton. Now please remember proton is H plus, there are no electrons involved in proton. So both the electrons which are in this bond, they shift simultaneously to this particular bond. And as the electrons shift here, the chlorine, this bond goes out and the chlorine goes away. So the final product obtained will be CH2. There will be a double bond over here, double bond and CH2, which is ethene, which is an alkene. So dehydrohydrogenation provides an alkene. This H plus will go with OH minus, it will form water, and this Cl minus, which goes away may react with K plus and it will form KCl. We are not concerned with that in the mechanism part. So this is the way the E2 mechanism occurs. It is a one state process. Extraction of proton by the base and leaving of Cl is at the same time and that is why it is a single state process. The concentration depends upon OH minus also. The concentration depend rate depends upon OH minus also. Rate depends upon the concentration of alkyl halide also, so it is second order. So it is a second order elimination reaction. In part 2, we are going to discuss the selectivity. That is, when more than two alkenes are possible products, which alkene will be formed in preference? And let us take another classic example of 2 chlorobutane which is cited in many textbooks and also in the board textbook of 12th standard. And writing here, 2 chlorobutane. minus is going to attack, it will attack either this hydrogen or it will attack either this hydrogen. Either of the two hydrogens 
can be attacked by OH minus. If this hydrogen is attacked, this will go and a double bond will be formed here. If this hydrogen is attacked, the double bond will be formed here. Let us treat them separately as two separate cases and then we will see which is a preferred product. Here, OH minus ion will choose hydrogen in such a way that the product form is more stable between the two. So let us first consider this hydrogen being removed. As this hydrogen is removed, at the same time this Cl goes away. As discussed, the double bond will be formed here and see the product that we will get is CH3, CH2, CH double bond CH2. As the double bond lies between first and second carbon atom, this is but 1 e Please remember, the one of the products is but 1 e now let us consider the second situation in which the base OH minus extracts this hydrogen. This bond will shift and as usual Cl will go away and a double bond will be formed here and what it gives you is CH3 CH double bond CH CH3. This is but so what we have seen is when there is a comparison, when there is a choice available, two different products are obtained in this case. One of them is but one in, and other is but two in. Now we will study which product is going to be formed in preference and why. So now let us concentrate on but one in and but two in. I am going to write both these structures one below the other so that we can compare. This is but 1 in and this is but 2 in. In order to understand which of the two structures is more stable, we have to make use of the concept of hyperconjugation. According to the concept of hyperconjugation, a hydrogen atom which is alpha to the double bond, that is this hydrogen atoms, can enter into a no bond resonance, they can shift over here and this bond can be shifted like this. So a resonance stabilization is possible in this case. The resonance stabilization depends upon the number of hydrogens which are attached on either side of C double bond C. Greater the number of these hydrogen atoms, greater are the number of hyperconjugation structures and greater is the stability of alkene. Now let us count the number of hydrogen atoms in but 1e and but 2e. Let me draw the structure of but 2e. count the number of atoms. Look at this. This is the functional group. The <coughs> carbon atom next to this carbon atom is this and there is number 1 and number 2. Two hydrogen atoms which are attached to the adjacent carbon atom. So the number of hyperconjugation structures possible in this case is only 2. Look at this particular situation. There is one carbon on the right of double bonded carbon, one carbon to the left. How many possible hydrogens can enter hyperconjugation? Three on one side and three on one side, that makes it six. So this particular compound, but 2 in, can form six hyperconjugation structures, whereas this can form only two. And that is why but 2 in is more stable compared to but 1 in. So in the dehydrohydrogenation, the choice will be made in such a way 
that a more stable product is formed and that is why but twin is formed to the extent of almost 80% whereas but one in is formed to the extent of about 20% that is based on the stability <coughs> this stability criterion was put forward by a scientist Sedzel in his very famous rule called as Sedzel's rule which says that more substituted a key it obviously goes without saying <coughs> that more substitute alkene is the one which having greater hyper conjugation possibilities and greater stability is formed as a preferred product now let us understand what do i mean by more substitute <coughs> in order to understand the concept of more substituted alkene we first study the structure of ethene or ethene this is ethene all the alkenes can be considered to be substituted products of this c double bond c where possible substitutions can occur at these four positions now let us compare again but to one e and but to two e in light of the alkene this is but one e If you compare this, C CH two CH is here. Instead of one hydrogen over here, what we have got is CH two CH three. CH two double bond. This particular structure and this is same. Only to the right, instead of having two hydrogen atoms, I have one hydrogen, and this hydrogen has been replaced by CH two CH three. So but one is mono substitute. Look at but two. Take this as a basic structure of alkene. One hydrogen is replaced by CH3 here. Another hydrogen of alkene is also replaced by CH3. So you can see that this is by substitute. And according to Sedgwick's rule, the greater substituted product is formed in preference, which is in accordance with what we have studied just now on the basis of hyper conjugation. So this tells us the Sedgwick's rule. or preferential selection of the product when more than one products are possible now let us compare the order of reactivity of an e2 mechanism with respect to a primary a secondary and a tertiary alkyl halide as we have discussed previously the strength of the final product or stability of the final product sorry will decide the reaction <coughs> now if you consider a secondary alkyl halide let us consider but to in again we have to consider this again and again so let us consider two chlorobutane in case of two chlorobutane Straight. In case of two chlorobutane, how many hydrogens are available, which can be removed by a base? This one, this one, this one, and this one. There are four hydrogen atoms available, which can be extracted by a base. Now let us consider a tertiary alkyl halide. to extract a proton how many protons can be removed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 you can see here as compared to four protons which are available for extraction by base in case of tertiary there are nine protons available or nine hydrogens available 
so it goes without saying that in case of tertiary the rate of e2 will be much faster compared to that in secondary in primary it will still be less if you want to see a primary alkyl halide can see that after this carbon atom only two hydrogens are available which are adjacent to this carbon atom for extraction so in case of a primary alkyl halide <coughs> only two hydrogens were available in case of secondary as we saw four were available in case of tertiary nine were available so obviously when it comes to e2 mechanism the order of reactivity of an alkyl halide follows the order tertiary secondary and primary now let us compare sn2 and i hope you remember the order of reactivity in sn2 is exactly ulta that is primary is greater than secondary is greater than tertiary that is why when there is a competition between e2 and sn2 if it is a tertiary alkyl halide undergo preferably E2 and not SN. This can be explained very nicely taking the example of Williams and synthesis. It is a method of preparation of ether using sodium alkoxide in which R and OR form ROR. Here it is absolutely necessary that the alkyl halide should be primary. If you take an alkyl halide as a tertiary alkyl halide, it will not undergo Williamson synthesis, but it will undergo elimination. When you take RONA, this OR minus is an extremely strong base. It will extract hydrogen, which will force CN to leave, and what we will get is an alkene, and we will not get an ether. This is a classic example of how E2 beats SN2 if the alkyl halide is tertiary. In the next part, we are going to study the E1 mechanism that we will do in part 2, which will immediately follow.